Hello YouTube, I'm going to do something slightly different today. I'm going to be talking about my fire. It's a side blast fire. Um, there seems to be on the internet lots of bottom blast fires where the air is fired underneath and the use of normal kind of coal. Whilst I use coke, which is very different. So I'm going to explain about this today and why I believe a side blast is far better, in my opinion, than any others. I mean, on this video, please do comment and give me your opinions because I don't know everything. Um, and I'm very happy to be enlightened by anyone who does have another uh, perspective of seeing these things. But I've been doing this using this forge uh, since 2009, so that's, that's a good while now. And I built this forge myself uh, from scratch. No. Um, no funny parts, no brake drums, it's, it's steel welded together and it works brilliantly. I've put no finish on it and it's lasted all this time. So I'm going to explain a bit more about the structure and how I actually set the fire up. And this is absolutely fundamental if I'm going to do any fire welding or production, forging or anything like this. It's all about the fire and how this is set up. And people like to just knock things together with bits of pipe and stuff and they wonder why they can't fire weld or, or it keeps burning or it gets all this gunk all over it. So I'm going to explain a bit more about it now. So first thing I'm going to do is show you what I do in the morning to prepare my fire. So just have a good watch. Okay, so this is uh, kind of eye level with, with the way the steel would go into my fire. And you can see it's all quite high and bunched up. And there's a lot of coke on here. If you're not sure or if you're pretty new to this, what coke is, it's a byproduct from coal or processed coal. So coal with all its impurities and other things mixed into it goes into an oven. Pretty much the same way you would make charcoal from wood. And they, they, they bake it at a very high temperature in a low oxygen environment. Uh, that enables the impurities to leach out and also natural gas. And they would use this natural gas uh, for lots of other things. Back in the Victorian times, they used it to light and heat everybody's home. Um, so the reason why you would want to use coke instead of using, um, say, things like normal coal, is coal will actually light by itself, so the whole thing will become a blaze. So people go, oh, I don't want to put too much coal on because it's going to be too hot for me here and I'm going to waste all of my fuel. So the difference between coal and coke is coke needs a huge amount of oxygen to stay alight, which is why you need to have a fan running all the time. So it's very difficult with a bellows, really, with this stuff, uh, unless you've got someone constantly feeding that oxygen in. So it's ideal if you've got an electric fan or some sort of mechanical water-driven means to do that. Um, the reason why that's a good idea is because it will only be hot where the oxygen is being fed into it, which means you can cover the fire and where the oxygen isn't reaching, that insulates it. So you've got two things happening. You've got all the oxygen you need burning at the bottom. You've got insulation around the top retaining all of that heat. So you don't need to use much uh, air into it. And also it's very... Um, what's the word, efficient. It's an efficient um, fuel to use because you've got so much control because it needs air and you can control the amount that air goes in. Coal, I'm presuming most of it will be alight and lots of gases and all those impurities are coming out making it inefficient. So, now I'm going to demonstrate how I clean my fire. I send it back like this. Like this, um, a rake, I think uh, a lot of people call these. Scraper, start digging out a little bit. Now, since the last time I forged, um, it hasn't been cleaned out obviously because it's been too hot. So every morning I have to remove what's called the clinker. So just stick your poker in the fire and start pulling it out. Uh, Right, so, so this is the size of the clinker that I had last time. The clinker consists of silicas and stones and all sorts of rubbish that hasn't managed to escape 
and this solidifies at the surface in a big molten gloop. It's glass-like when I say silica, like silica, glass silica. Um, so this is uh, things that you can use um, to grit your pathways, as they used to back in the olden days, instead of rock salt. Um, I tend to just throw it away, take it to the uh, nearest place that will accept them. Unless, of course, you want them, and uh, feel free to uh, ask and you can collect them. So now I'm going to dig it out. So, this part I'm going to be explaining the depth, and I'm going to flip the camera up and show you what's inside. Okay, so I don't know if you can see here, you were looking in this angle before, so now I'm starting to dig down, just using the rake. This kind of a motion to expose the air hole. Now, some people like to dress and, and mould the sides. I find it has a natural slope, which I don't need to address all the time, and so I just keep it. So all I'm doing is exposing that glue, um, glue chew iron, chew. So I'll explain what the chew iron is. And here is a very important thing to remember. This is a chew iron. Um, I'll explain more about the structure, which is basically a pipe with a water cooling jacket around it. And there's nothing special about this. It's not cast or anything. It is just plates welded together. It's actually a square face. You probably can't see that. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to turn the air on. Just to clear out. Clear out the throat, if you like. Now this is something that a lot of people forget. Certainly I forgot for many, many years. Or didn't understand, if you like. When a lot of people clear out this hole, this is just sand underneath here. And it's mainly ash now, actually. People go, oh, you need fire bricks and ash to start with. No, I just use regular builder sand. It um, made nice big clinkers for a little while. And I say a little while and then your ash builds up and you get this natural self-healing, self-forming cup for your filer to, to go down. Um, so a lot of people dig it out to the point where they see the hole and they go, that's enough, and start building their fire. Wrong, in my opinion. Dig even deeper, get right down. Remove some of that. You need a good couple of hands of kind of your sand or whatever you started using, go down and probably in my case that's 50 mil, 50 mil down from the hole. And the reason for that is when you're blasting air, all this sand and crud starts to build up at the bottom. If you haven't got a place for all of that stuff to go, then you just start blasting this sand, impurities and rubbish, back on top of your piece, making it very dirty and making it uh, unable to fire weld because it, it's, it's been mixed with all of these other things that don't make it respond very well. So a natural cup like this, digging quite deep, 50 mil below your line, um, and I'll give you some dimensions for this in a bit, if I'm feeling generous. Um, but this is kind of what works for me. So now, all I do is I add my wood, just a nice big pile like this. Uh, you can roll up bits of newspaper if you've got the time and you like the act. I can't be bothered, so I would either use wood and just light it with a burner, or if I'm really lazy, I would just light my oxypropane torch and light the coals at the bottom and just build it up from there without using wood at all, but this is... So now that the wood is kind of lit, just give it a chance. There we go, it's kind of taken now. Now I can just knock some of these coals over and start to cover it. Not all of it, because I need, need it to allow a bit of heat to come out so all of my smoke goes up the chimney. At the moment, it's hot at all so you need that heat to take all the smoke out of the chimney. Now coke is a smokeless fuel so this is mainly just the wood that is smoking at the moment and it's uh, 
it's this colour, this bright white colour, because of the amount of moisture that is inside it. And the key to knowing whether the poke is lighting or not, is you can start to hear cracking little pops. That's an indi indication that the, uh, the moisture inside the coke is expanding and popping out of the little bubbles that it's got on it. And you know that your coke is taking light. Like that. Did you hear that? Little pop. That's where you wear your glasses in case one of them ding, hits you in the eye, which it always does. As the flames build up, I pile more coke on until I have a lovely big dome. So I'm going to fast forward at this point. So whilst the fire is kind of getting to temperature, let me just explain a bit more in depth about what I've just said. So side blast, you've got a pipe coming into the fire with your oxygen. That might be controlled by a fan. You'll have some sort of regulator, either a ball valve or a sliding plate to control this. This goes through your flue, which is water cooled, generally. Uh, so this is filled with water. Now this is your fire. So I explained when you dig down, you're creating a cup about here. This allows all your rubbish to fall in. You'll have a natural, a natural V up of how your sand and dust has been made. Then you've got a big, as much coke as you can put on. And I'll explain why. You're controlling the amount of oxygen. Coke doesn't burn without oxygen. So the amount of coke you have on top of your fire does not indicate how much coke you're using. How much coke you're using is indicated by the amount of oxygen you're using. So the more oxygen, all of this will burn. Control this, you control how much this burns. All of this insulates the heat. Oxygen is all burned up here. Heat rises. You have the perfect temperature located here in an oxygen-free environment, which is why I do not use flux. I'm thinking about it. You don't use, they didn't use flux many, many years ago. They hadn't got all the um, ingredients that we have today. They've been fire welding for 5,000 years. They may have used silica sand if they could get hold of it. But generally, you don't need to, as I've demonstrated with mild steel. And certainly you can get to temperatures higher with pure iron and uh, wrought iron uh, without burning because they don't have a carbon content. So that is my explanation. Steel will come here, not into here. It will burn. It comes along here. You're controlling the heat in this nucleus with a nice insulated fire and controlled oxygen and a crap trap, if you like. So this is now the fire coming up to temperature. Got a nice big mound. Uh, the way the, the structure of the fire slopes in, I've got a nice little window of fire for me to use. The fire isn't coming out the top, it's here in the side. Um, I can change the dynamics of this. This is what it naturally wants to be. Uh, but I can change the dynamics if I'm doing, say, some things that are bigger or um, complicated shapes by moving and scraping some of the sand away and uh, placing the steel in different positions. Um, but this works very well, uh, very cheap to build. You can get sand for free, steel at a standard price. You don't need to buy anything special. And there's a sense of scale, tape measure. So from steel level, as I call it, this mound is actually mounting up to nearly a foot and I can control not burning anything full blast and now I'll explain some dimensions and uh, type of blasters you can buy because they're, they're surprisingly cheap so this here is a demo forge that I built um, didn't take me very long it's just standard sheets of metal cut and Look at the welds, that's arc welded, um, so you can use it with this cheap standard welder that you've got. I've got a very good one, but 
you know, if you use it properly, it will do the same job. So let me show you what's inside and how it works. So again, side blast. Pipe goes in here with oxygen. Pipe comes out here. This is cool. You've got here um, cold water in, hot water out, as it does this natural, um, uh, whatever you call it, process, gravity fed. Uh, controlling the air with a ball valve. Now, what do I use to uh, pump oxygen with? I use one of these. A very simple, uh, bouncy castle blower that mounts on something similar like this. Uh, retrofitted, my mum's a professional seamstress so I can get her to make all sorts of little things up. Basically goes on to there and then you've got a, a, a universal jubilee clip to attach that. Uh, this is the same fan that I used for my forge. Um, you can buy them brand new, about set, uh, 50 to 70 pounds online. And I've uh, got this one for a tenner actually. And it, it never been used, absolutely plenty amount of oxygen that you need, replaceable um, and efficient, you know, they're, they're designed to be going on all day and uh, they give you the right amount of oxygen that you need. So let's talk si some dimensions. So this is the side that steel goes in. So I've got a 50 millimeter retaining perimeter if you like, that's the depth of here to retain some of the coal. That so it doesn't all just fall out to the sides, but this is the level that steel goes in. So from the level, uh, let's give you some side dimensions actually first. So this box is 250 mil deep. So 50 mil down, you've got a box depth of um, 200 millimeters. So from the bottom of the fire up to the center of my hole, I've got 140 millimeters. Um, 100 mil from the bottom to the plate. The plate is 75 millimeters. And I've built this, it's nothing special. It is a piece of kind of rectangular section. Cut the top, I've cut a plate and uh, welded the plate onto there. Had another plate that I bored a hole through and welded the pipe on, then welded that onto it. Uh, this is replaceable, I've just bolted it. So if this does eventually rust away, it would take me 20 minutes to half an hour or so to weld up another one. Um, I would expect this to last me at least five to ten years. Uh, I mean the other one is uh, not as good welding. Um, that's still going, that's been going for over seven years uh, and I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> so what I would fill this with, I filled it up with just regular builder sand to about uh, the level that steel would come in. I like to put a plate of steel, keep this area nice and clean. Um, <clears throat> and then from here I would dig down. You want to dig, like I say, a little cup, 50 mil, no deeper than that, to collect all your rubbish. Right. Uh, any other dimensions you might want to? You've got the depth. It is 560 mil wide. Pipe diameter 25 mil. And hopefully that should explain a lot. One other thing before I get started. Uh, 
getting the right temperature for fire welding. Uh, this is something I've been doing very recently. I'm not never used to. You just kind of used to watch the fairies, the little sparks. You'd know. Ah, it's uh, it's up to temperature. I can now fire weld it. Uh, another technique is when you've got your steel in the fire, and uh, you're wondering if you've got that lovely kind of slippery heat on the go. You can just, if you can see this here, just lift that steel up. And you can see the core, you can see uh, the temperature that adds. You can actually watch the molten metal just start to puddle and you know it's right and you know it's not burning. Um, you don't want to do this too often because as you're lifting it up, you're allowing heat out, uh, you're allowing oxygen in, and you're lifting it away from that nice temperature as well. So it's not something you want to always do, but at the critical moment, if you're worried about it or just want to have a little peek, lift it up, quick look, drop it down, give it as much time as you think it needs. Perfect. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe and comment and um, leave me some feedback. If you've got any other opinions on a better way of doing the forge, um, different fuels, different setups, for me, this is one of the cheapest, most efficient ways of making one and has done me, well, as you can see, I do quite a lot of fire welding, quite a lot of precision, clean forge work. This has done absolutely beautifully for me. Take care, YouTube. See you later.